unable to breathe, paranoid, to the point where you get delusional, start feeling suicidal, extremely depressed, all these kind of things. When your kidney are failure and they have to put a shunt in your chest, a hole in your chest and friggin' hook you up all kinds of ways. When they got to put you on dialysis and pump all your blood out your body to flow new blood back in, recycle the blood and put it back in you. And it wipes you out to the point you can't do nothing but just lay there. And you have to get that procedure done once a week, every week. Welcome back to Soul Flow TV again everybody. It's your host with the most. Today we are going to do a little bit of teaching, right? In an effort to get our people to stop smoking. So today's video is about smoking. It's about the damaging effects that it has on your body and mind over a period of time and in the end what you have to look forward to right let me start out by saying this I'm not talking from a perspective where I don't know what I'm saying from first line experience is where I'm going to talk today because I myself used to smoke today we're going to talk about a couple of things as you all know for one I all, I'm, I've been doing track and field since I was yay high growing up in Jamaica from me a little little picnic. Me I run track and field. Right? Track and field actually helped to send me to college here in the United States of America. So I benefited from track and field. I benefited from clear lungs, from not smoking. I didn't pick up my first smoke until come say my first smoke, you know, that means that I know cigarette me smoke. I pick up my first ganja. Draw, which was my first time smoking when I was no, that's a lie. No, actually, that's true. When I was 18 years old, I take two puff, two puff off a spliff, and it didn't, it did, it did too much for me, so I left it alone. Right? Then I moved over to London, England at 18 years old, and me, it, it's a call over there one day. A bridge and said, You want to try a fag, mate? I say a fag, what is a fag? I don't try no fag. He say a fag, a cigarette. And you know we laugh it off and thing and I end up trying and it, it kind of warm up my body. Little did I know then, lack of education is a hell of a thing because little did I know then that actually smoking, what it does is it cuts down your circulation so you might feel warm at the moment when you smoke the cigarette, right? But when you're done, within 5-10 minutes of you finishing that smoke, the blood will be withdrawn from your endings and not only the fingertip endings and toe endings think of all the endings in your body lip nose penis all them endings so i didn't know that then and i wondered how now looking back in hindsight me i said to myself sir damn i some used to, i used to smoke benson and hedges i mean used to say yo every time i smoke a cigarette them warm me up so I used it as an excuse, not realizing I was actually getting addicted. So I said, shit, I'm smoking more, more and more and more. Eventually, I quit. Right? Came back to the U.S., joined the Army, quit smoking cigarettes because they used to take us on some long runs. And you could not be a smoker to uh, do one of these infantry runs. So, thanks be to the Most High, choosing that line of work actually got me to get off of those things. Now today when I'm working in occupational therapy, I get to see the end stages of smoking over a lifetime of smoking. So I get to work with people that have lost their limbs or I get to watch these people last 10 years of their life be one leg is removed, then the other leg is removed a couple years later, then fingers are being removed and that kind of stuff, right? So, today I'm going to talk about smoking as this. Look, you see when you're young and you feel like say you're invincible and yeah man, I'm stressed out, give me a cigarette and you burn a cigarette and you roll up some weed and you smoke some weed. Listen, even weed, marijuana, ganja, herb is a very healing herb but it is abused through smoking. You know, after you smoke it and actually when you smoke the herb, I know say, enough herbs man are going to come by here or enough high people who don't even understand why they smoke herbs, I will come down here and I will try to tell me, say, to low out the herbs, because I fight me, I fight the herbs. Let me tell you this, first of all, I'm a very big advocate 
for the use of and legalization of marijuana, ganja, herb, right? But not for it being used in the wrong way. If you are going to use it to kill yourself, then me no want to see you use it. The human body is not made to house smoke. Therefore, it's not made to process out smoke. So all you're doing is trapping all kinds of toxins inside of your body that will eventually affect all your organs and eventually your organs will start to shut down and different parts of your body will start to be affected in a negative manner. Let's even talk about the people that are around smokers. I work with people in end stage of life and I'm trying to tell you that a lot of these people, I see them and I ask them, I said, did you smoke throughout your lifetime? And they were like, no, I never smoked, but my husband did. And you know, he used to have the room full of smokers. He used to smoke one after the other, and I loved him, so, you know, I stayed there. It never bothered me after a while. When we first got together, it did, but it did. And then you're looking at them now, and you're like, shit, you might as well have been smoking because for them, husband dead, and him dead from something like a sudden heart attack. So he lived his life jolly, and then he went out with a sudden, I'm out of here. Here you are suffering the types of effects where your chest is tightening up, you can't breathe, your mind is getting paranoid because you can't breathe. If you can imagine, do this with me. You're my audience, so do this. Use your hand. Cock up. Shut off your nose. And breathe only through your mouth. Only through your mouth. And then I want you to do this. I want you to stifle your mouth now and keep your nose stifled too. And only leave one little finger space for your mouth to breathe. That is what it feels like to a person with something that's called COPD. COPD now, under COPD you're going to have bronchitis, you're going to have emphysema, you're going to have coughing, wheezing, tightness in the chest, all these other things. Go look up COPD. Go look it up on Google. When you look up everything else on Google, go look up COPD. Right? Every, this, these are the things that you have to look forward to when you start smoking and decide that you're never going to stop. This is what your end is going to look like. It's going to look like COPD. These are your choices. Or it's going to look like heart failure. Or it's going to look like renal kidney failure. Or it's going to look like a stroke. Or it's going to look like throat, mouth, head, neck, stomach, cancer. So you choose right now which one you want. Let me tell you this. To see someone who is fully functional, fully able to do everything, to see them stripped of their dignity, to be, I always said to myself, yo, I don't even want to live old. I don't want, I don't want to live till I'm old, old to the point where somebody have to flip me over and wipe my ass after I take a poop and change my underwears for me and I'm just sitting there just a helpless log. I, I don't want to live that long, right? But that is what happens to people who smoke over a long period of time. And the thing is, you don't even have to smoke over a long period of time because nowadays the cigarette them are so filled with so many chemicals, they're actually hurting people at an earlier age. So the field that I work in, occupational therapy, rehabilitation, I get to see people coming in at a younger age and younger ages stroked out one side of the body stop working. Can you imagine being stripped of your dignity to the point where you can't wipe your own ass? You can't take yourself to the toilet when you need to poop. You have to lay there and shit and piss on yourself until somebody comes to change you. You can't roll left or right in the bed. Somebody have to come reposition you. Then, if you're lucky enough, someone has to teach you to do all the things that you need to do. to Basic taking care of yourself. Basic self-care. Someone is going to have to teach you to feed yourself again. Someone is going to have to teach you to... And you might not think anything of it now that you're young. Or you might not think anything of it because you're not affected yet. But it's coming. I promise you it's coming. It's not a good promise, but I promise you it's coming. Stroke patients, man. I see stroke patients as because it's so frustrating and you have different types of stroke. Right? To see the mind totally stroke out from lack of, lack of oxygen. To see someone looking, I, I'll never forget this one young lady, she was, what, 40 years old, 
and she didn't have proper health insurance so we could not give her therapy but she she stroked out she came into the facility the facility gave her a basic bed and nurses would go in and give her emergency care if needed but she could not come over to the therapy side of the building because she had no insurance to pay for it she was a hot gal party gal her family came in and put up a lot of pictures around her room right and all the pictures were I noticed one thing in all the pictures she had a cigarette right here she had a big bottle of something and she had on all these fancy outfits tight tight skimpy body shape good and to hit 40 and bam be struck down like that one side of her body didn't work anymore and she I never forget she used to say I tip it the pie and she swore that she was actually saying the real like she was communicating in her mind and her eyes she's communicating with you fully effectively and clearly to be struck like that at 40 years old to look at yourself and know that you're saying and you don't even know that you're not speaking correctly it is so frustrating and you have broker's aphasia, Wernicke's aphasia and all these other things I won't go that deep into it but I'm trying to give you an idea of the things that are coming your way if you're really a smoker okay now the end of the story for her is she never got better from that she just learned to deal with the frustration a little bit better so she figured out ways to like point to stuff that she wanted. She I think she realized that she wasn't sounding clearly and people weren't able to uh, communicate with her and she wasn't able to understand information coming in. That's the worst one. When you're able to understand everything people are saying but you cannot deliver or say back to them what you want to say because it comes out sounding to them like But in your mind you're saying please take me over there so I can use the bathroom. And before they, what, what, what are you saying? You want to go to the kitchen? Oh, you're hungry? And no, no, and you're like, no, no, I want to go over there. But that's how you're sounding. So there's some scary things out there to look forward to. Let's not talk about getting your limbs removed and all these other things. I'm not going to draw this video out any longer, man. This is my Stop Smoking campaign video. And I would really like to see more people actually stop smoking. It's not good for you and eventually it's going to kill you. Many know people are going to come on upon the video and say, Yo, dog, we're going to dead anyways. All of us are going to die anyways. Yes, but if you can influence your quality of life to be better while you have life, then why spend long years suffering? The sad thing about most of these things that happen to you through smoking is that you don't die immediately. You live for years and years and years suffering. And yo, I, I could only tell y'all so much right now, man. So let's cut the video short and say this. Make a promise to yourself today, right? Because I made a promise to myself many years ago. So y'all, I need you to make a promise to yourself today. That if y'all going if y'all gonna use ganja, use the ganja through tea, foods, and steaming. All right. Cigarette aka cancer stick stay away from them things all right it's so flow tv man like comment share and subscribe and remember this in closing i'm going to say this the most precious thing you have in this life is your health you can run around and get all the money and amass all the material shit that you want and pile it up and enjoy it but once your health starts to fail there's rarely a person that you will find on earth that would not give every friggin' thing they have that is material. Give it all away to just please give me back my health. So, while you can, protect your health. Alright? Protect your health. Good health, long life. Bless up. I'm out. Peace.